Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Writers Infusion. I'm your host Susan. I'm here with a large crowd, so I'll start with our usual gang. We have Dave, Jen, Ed, and Julie. We have our special guest critiquer, author Connie Mayo, who wrote The Island of Worthy Boys. Um, I'm going to plug this awesome book. You can check out uh, our website because her name's right on our front page. It's a great historical fiction piece and I highly recommend it. And we're lucky to have her today because she's a great critiquer. And um, here we have our guest writer. This is Billy Bowden from Rhode Island. And Billy is going to read uh, a piece from his short story. This is an excerpt, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll start the critique. Great. And we're going to skip the summary, but this is about your recent engagement. Yes. Okay. Okay. Take this photograph from me, Ogonquit by the sea, the place where my heart melts and the sun sings. Every time I hear its name, I think, and every time I think something moves inward towards me, I got down on one knee, sweating, this moment of life, nothing but pure love, love spent over weeks, and adoring love, love that never wanted to go away. Our family drank in the sunsets, for some of them it was the first time. How long did we talk about it? We thought, then we just smiled, pushing those negative tensions away. Projecting our visions in the future, I remembered our past. A lifetime was already created here, the first time you asked me. You had me at hello, of course, but then I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure if love was dispersed. We grappled with something like tension for a while, and of course, that tension was sheared. It wasn't the cool darkness of apathy. It wasn't the dark shade of neglect. It was the misunderstood depression the empty chasm, but of course, we shared it. But how could we share the same? We didn't, and so we grew apart. Through aimless nights, I spent back tossing endless drinks, thinking that chasm would simply remove itself. It didn't. I saw atonement for what I wasn't sure. That first night hearkened on me with your parents and I, a foreigner. The language was different. The feel was different and it was a difference I needed that I admired. When those nights, alone in the shower, empty water dumped on top of my contemplated head in shame, those trickles made me think, who was I that I was alone? Was independence better than nothing? Was something more creative? Come and meet my parents, you said, and I said that I would love to before I could control those words. They just escaped. Even though I reached out for them, they could never come back. How could they ever? The thoughts passed through me like ink in my veins, or fluidly like ink on the page. Then I remembered your voice, passing, a passing sound. Back then, it was only passing because truly our time together was brief. I only had a vignette to remember, but the word yet seems terrible to describe something so terrific. Three years I spent already walking up and down that monstrous terrain, jumping in friends' cars to attend parties down the line, thinking that we were invisible. That invisible cloak was ephemeral, such was the problem. Coaches called me to dance. That backward and forward motion wasn't enough, either dancing or moving the bottle, pouring poison into my receiving mouth, waiting on the world to change. How to decipher this? That the peaking hours of that night after spending hours in contemplation about composition, we spoke to each other as though we knew each other since our lives began. Could we have? I knew your mother before you told me of her physically fit appearance past 50 years old. I knew that she had to be a teacher and that her dreams were interlocked. I heard the voices of her students with little money but dreams like anyone else. I saw them too when I worked in tandem with people I barely knew. When these groups had the capability of rearranging my whole life, there it was, the movie, scene one, act one, 21 years in, and yet a beginning. You pulled us over. Would you like a ride to your car? Just one passage? You took me over then, while I was with my roommate, of course. I felt my skin creeping up on my forearms. Before then, I had been the quiet boy. I was in the class to pass and to move on. Could I do anything else? To my own, I was average. I would most likely get an A if I tried hard, so I heard. But would I meet the love of my life? 
Staring at the room across from me, just as puzzled as I was, she didn't even speak. Her friend spoke for her and my anxiety woke me up. The dream turned inward. There was something there, had to be something. My hope was quickly spiraling down the empty stream where I'd been before. I misplaced it over and over and I saw it go. Why do you keep leaving the room? I can no longer reach for you, grope for you, or control you. Then there came the pilfering, the suggestions. Why do you read? Where will those lines of poetry take you? My privileged body sat in contemplation, watching oceanic nights. There it was, the world. And beyond that, my feet run without my walking. I couldn't feel my face as we sat in the back of your tight car. There were water bottles everywhere while my heart was in my throat. The water bottle said, drink me. The car said, hold on. Everything I knew, structure, disappeared down the least painful gap where everything just floated, where everything just made sense. You wanted to be a teacher? You cared about what you learned here? The knowledge that you gained? You paid for a reason? Tell me more. I could have held your sweet, delicate hand where our sweat mixed together, but I didn't know that then. I could have told you I love you, but I didn't feel that then. From the purview of the mirror, I only saw light, my opportunity, our opportunity. But I, did I see getting old? A porch somewhere where coffee rises and novels were set. We could, ri we could read in peace over the fire at night. Look at the stars above our colonial home. Pointed tops, beautiful interior. We can finally drink this in. Just wait. Your eyes told me everything. That mix of blue and green. Who are you? Who is perfect like this? I knew you, but really, I didn't. I knew you in my dreams where I prayed to a God that I half believed in, that one day he would send me the person who would be my equal. Not in every way, just a balance, the fulcrum and the middle, the medium that provides. I couldn't provide, and my relationships only looked like fire meeting ice until that moment. In the car, we could have turned the whole world around, but we simply drove on. Three years time and the brunt of all New England offered us, cold weather and warm, tired nights and lively nights, binaries we couldn't resist, they seemed to be part of us, sweet friends that brought us here and time, of course, time, that sweet boy you knew, who sat in the front of the class with his hat tilted looking at the apprehending world as if they would never accept his real self, became a real self when you said those words. Consuming a lifetime in three years, not impossible, and in fact, it became possible every time I picked up the phone, including the first time. With a whole history of trauma, a whole history of rejections, I'll text you and you text me. That ended quick. I only said few words. The only thing I could think of was not, hey, but an anecdote about our elderly neighbor. There she is. She walks and we walk, yet she walks the road up and down, up and down, up and down. The movement, her feet crumbling as she walked, I thought would be a nice topic. Later, we were brave about her. She was a movie, our superstar. But then I had only few words. I wouldn't tell you much. Then I couldn't write, because how could I breathe enough for one sentence when on the other end of that digital equipment was a beautiful soul waiting to be discovered? But discovery, that doesn't hit the right note. It hits it hard, but you would have to take the world's largest sledgehammer and have it collide with a material solid to just begin to understand. Language doesn't do justice. We spend a lifetime because of lack. I pour words into lack and lack doesn't reciprocate. Instead, lack torments. Lack wakes me up at 1 a.m. and it doesn't relent. How could I sleep? The world awaits words and letters. They told me they gave up on letters so long ago. So why would they want those letters now? My letters, her letters, our letters. Mm. You're welcome. You know, it's Thank funny, you. you were saying off camera, I think, that you mostly write poetry, mm. right? And when I first read this, it reads like a poem. Mm. Um, okay. It reads more, you know, even from the very first couple of sentences, take this photograph for me, a gunkwit by the sea, the place where my heart melts. It's very poetic. Mm -hmm. And so when I read this piece, 
it's it's nice in terms of flowing and thoughts and all that and I thought that was really pretty definitely um, I think if if you're looking to make this more of a short story or a memoir mm -hmm. um, which it might be it might be a memoir definitely. a short memoir then I would want to know what are some of the details mm -hmm. so not just that when you have you know, at the very first page, we thought then we just smiled, pushing those negative tensions away. Why were there negative tensions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was happening, you know, day to day between you to what was good and what wasn't good in specific concrete scenes? Because that Definitely. would really let me get to know the two of you. Absolutely. And that's what I was looking for when I, I was reading this. Mm. So. It yeah. depends on what you want to get out of it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what I, I happened to take a, a short course uh, last Saturday. And one of the things that the uh, instructor mentioned is, as far as uh, writing, one of the things that he wants to do for his readers is first have his readers understand and then have his readers care. Okay, so I, I agree with Sue that there's a lot of material here but it's in a form that is, it's difficult to grasp. It's difficult to, te te to tell. I mean, I, I'm a very linear kind of thinker. So in my mind, I, I, want, I want this all to be in chronological order. You know, I mean, you can frame it, absolutely. You can say, you know, you know back then this is what happened and stuff like that. You can put it in a context. But I wanna know, I wanna know from the beginning what happened. You know, you, you meet this person, uh, something happens between you, obviously, you know, it's not, uh, you know, something that's uh, immediate, okay, but, it, but it's ongoing, and there, there's a kind of contact going back and forth. And it seems like there's, uh, there's a, an incident that just kind of, I don't know what the word is, crystallizes everything mm -hmm. uh, and to me that would make a terrific story okay I mean one way to look at this is like well okay boy meets girl you know boy loses girl boy gets girl okay but there, there's something about this that that uh, that moment of crystallization that would make this a really special and a really unique story I mean different from you know different from everybody else's mm. so that's what I would like to see I would like to see it you know, from the beginning, step by step, what happens, and the, the difficulty, and then, you know, that, that moment of crystallization. <coughs> uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. You know, there were two misdirections on this paper. One was it said, short story. This isn't a short story. You understand that it's not a short story? Definitely. Okay, so <laughs> right off the bat, I am prepared and uh, willing to uh, read a short story. Okay. The second is, I, uh, I was very enthusiastic because I read and understood the summary. Ah, we're going to get a drippy story about a proposal and uh, we hope he doesn't get uh, too melancholy. And Okay, let's start. The first sentence was terrific. I said, what a brilliant opening. Take a picture here. Take a picture of this scene. And then you know what happens? The scene goes away. The scene is, has disappeared into a, and if you forgive me, a lot of self-indulgent uh, worshiping. Because there's no real story here. It, you, you, it's like a, 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 you're, you're in a candy store and you're taking some of this. Let, let me give you a, a, a brief example of, uh, the only way I can put it is an analogy between uh, this and music. You're in Symphony Hall, and you're in early, like batting practice. You're listening to them tune up. Okay, batting what are you hearing? Or <laughs> 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 this is yeah. this is. <laughs> don't be so literal. Okay, okay so it's before the symphony starts, and you have a uh, hundred unbelievably talented musicians practicing, tuning up, going up and down. And what do you hear? Is a bunch of caterwauling noise. If you listen to one instrument, you'd hear beautiful music. Okay, the conductor tap, 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 they shut down, and then beautiful music comes out. Now what's the difference? Organization. 
there's a theme, there's a melody that we can understand, there's a direction, there's a sequence of events that are very followable. Even if it's new music, it follows a certain framework. Now it may be generational. I'm ancient here. I, I'm three times older than everyone in the group. <laughs> and I grew up with very formulaic stories. Perhaps today, kids don't need this formula. They can call it whatever they want, and it's a short story. For me, it's not a short story. Well, let's talk about what a, sh what a story is, because I had this question uh, when I went to, we were talking about writers' conferences, so um, uh, the Muse, Grub Street puts on the Muse, and one of the um, seminars that I went to, they talked about what is a story, and it seems so obvious, mm -hmm. but, but again, <laughs> nobody knew, so they told you um, <laughs> that a story is um, a narrative where a character has some sort of transformation and is different at the end of the story than they are at the beginning of the story. If that doesn't happen, you literally don't have a story, right? You can think of any story, they went through some you know, fairy tales and so forth, and there's always sort of like something that happens and the per there's somebody at the end who is different than they were before. So there is, even though a story doesn't have to be linear, and I think that you probably wouldn't be attracted to writing very, very linear things, and that's fine and mm -hmm. it's original, um, that there has to be uh, characters, even though if you don't want to name them, but there have to be characters and we have to understand the transformation. Um, overall, I would say that um, a lot of short stories that I write, that, that I read from um, you know people who are not published, um, have sort of the opposite problem of view. They have they're they're not lyrical enough. They, they they're sort of all about the mechanics and all about moving the person from one room to the other. You do not have that problem, which is great. So your asset, your strength is that you're, lyr that you're lyrical, that you're imaginative, and you are um, not um, really confined to uh, a lot of structure. You're not boxed in. But I think you need, if you want to write short stories, you need to work within the structure of a framework of an actual story. And then you'll have no problem having uh, imaginative language and, and, and poetical phrases and stuff. So that's not going to be a problem for you. But I think it's, all, it's about disciplining um, you know, your, um, your strengths that you have. Hmm. On that note, so tie in music and the word lyrical <laughs> and the poetry, I didn't know until we spoke to you beforehand that you write poetry. I found this to be a poem, even song lyrics. Mm -hmm. And not just the rhyming of it, but the, the beautiful language and the repetition of some of your phrasing. It, it's stream of consciousness. And it's beautiful. And by the way, congratulations. It's a story of your engagement. It's lovely. But if you are to write a story of your engagement, Give us more plot, give us dialogue. We want to be there with you. We want to be on a rock, on the cliff, somewhere, wherever that photo is, a gun quit, or mm -hmm. in a room by a fireplace, but we want to hear the interchange. And if the negative, a lot of negative words on that first page, the darkness and apathy and neglect and shade and depression, if there were negatives, and I'm not going to rob you of those, Billy, if they're there, but they get um, flipped, mm -hmm. or if they get worked through, Let's see that, or let's mention that. But you've mentioned only negative and not how you came out on the other side. The two of you came out on the other side well, as we didn't one get that far joint. Either, right? Oh, I understand. I thought this was in its entirety. I yeah. apologize. I, um, for, for just the first response, I read a lot of Virginia Woolf, so stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. I'm writing, no, my I love thesis, stream of writing my thesis on Virginia Woolf, so I'm very loose. Who's in my afraid writing. of her, by the way? I, I, I love her so much. Um, but um, I'm very. Uh, influenced by her her style of writing and but my poetry is always free verse so that's why there's a very lack of organization in this so when I set out to write this originally I wasn't really thinking of it as my own story uh, I sort of wanted I obviously was very influenced by my own story but I didn't want it to necessarily come across originally as my own and I reflecting back on it I thought it was really interesting where it sort of went, it was sort of an exploration of interiority rather than anything that was exterior. So I think that what I got most out of this is that the process of the proposal is a very internal experience. So I, I think that it was interesting to sort of, you know, like explore the interiority that is, you, all, you often can't put language to during that moment so i i found it very tricky and i also think it's very interesting that if i were to think of it as a sort of memoir where i took it and sort of went back in retrospect instead of 
developing because I think originally I wanted to develop the moment of the proposal and I ended up going backwards in time and I yes. didn't expect myself to do that. Uh, get so us to that moment. Get us to that moment. But you do. You have um, a space between some paragraphs where I assume you want a, to break. Mm -hmm. You want the reader to notice a break, and you say, um, "Who was I that I was alone? Wh why are you alone?" And then you pulled us over. Who is the you? Why were you pulled over? Where were you pulled over? So you are outside, but it is mostly internal, and you can be all internal. Definitely. Just, right. But I, I don't think, think you're bringing us in. Like bring you're us really in. internal, yeah, and then I'm sort of like right knocking at the door, right. like, "Hello, what's going on in there?" Right. So um, the other another um, device, I think, I don't know if that's the right word that that I saw that you use is there's a lot of um, interrogatives in here. There's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, sentences that are questions, mm -hmm. and I that sort of. Um, I, I mean, I, you were asking a question. I wasn't even sure exactly what the question was. So I felt that that really threw me off even more than the sentences that ended with the period. So I would say that that, uh, that, would, that in a short story should be reduced. I mean, it, it, gets, it, it's, it can be used, but I think it's overused mm -hmm. in this piece. And That's even if you want to use poetry as part of your writing, because there are some really good authors out there yeah. um, who you can tell are poets and their writing is just Beautiful. There are whole novels written in verse. That always right. amazes me. Right. Yeah. Last year's Newbery Medal winner. It was written in verse, all in verse. So that you know, there are books you can you know, read like that, and maybe that's how you want to do it. I think what we're trying to say here that even if you want to, even if you want to stick with this type of writing and this kind of free mm -hmm. flow, it's to me at least, unlike Adam, pretty. Well, I mean, I have an engineering degree, so <laughs> it's that's that just how sense. I think. <laughs> but. Um, it's still, it's so abstract for me mm. that um, I have a hard time knowing what you're talking about Definitely. for a lot of it. So even though it sounds pretty, even if you're thinking and you want to do free flow, I think you need to be more specific mm -hmm. about what, what the free flowing talk is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a little too abstract. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing you could do is actually do a little outline. Usually I think people don't outline short stories, but if you needed, if you need to impose some structure, you could sort of say, I mean, you, you, there are some, what look like scenes because there's, there's a break. Um, and so uh, what is each scene trying to convey? And so you could do sort of like a log line or something for each scene, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that can give you some structure. And then you can sort of go a little crazy in there, but make sure you get done what you say you were going to do. If this is supposed to be, I'm going to talk about when I met her, the first day I met her, mm -hmm. then make sure you get that done while you're being very, you know, poetic. And if you're thinking about the first day you met her, then you should have a clear picture in your head of was it at a restaurant or were you out in a park or wherever you were. Mm -hmm. So with that picture in your head, incorporate that into the writing so that we also understand what it looked like and, and yes. what it was like all around you when that went on. Yeah, yeah. you have some wonderful topic sentences, but then the the topic goes away. Off. It really, it really drifts away. And I'm wondering why you throw away the beautiful lines. Mm. Uh, three years' time and the brunt of all New England offered us. Great topic sentence. Us. There were two people there. What did the two of you do to ward off the brunt of the New England uh, winter? Yeah. That's a great scene. But where did we go from there? I don't know where we went. And there, I, I've underlined and I isolated a couple of other. Just terrific topic sentences Thank that you. They, they went away. Uh, it, we, we have to watch, we have to do a couple minutes. Jen, talk, please. No, I'm just speak, you please know. speak. <laughs> oh, keep going. I just wanted to, to comment that um, I, I think that if your fiance was reading this, um, she would probably burst into tears because I can feel the emotion that is in the story yes. coming from you. Mm. I can feel it coming from you. I don't feel it because, I, as people say, I don't understand what's happening. Mm. If she read it, I'm sure she would burst into tears because she'd be like, oh, I remember that. And she would know exactly what you were talking about. And, mm. you know, and we don't. The, but, the, but the funny thing is, is that the things that I think most writers struggle with, you nailed. And it's like the easier stuff that you have to work on. So like voice is beautiful. Lyrical language, beautiful. Interiority, beautiful. You know, a adding structure to it is almost easy after you've nailed, nailed those. Like some people never nail those things. Um, so I just, I wanted to commend you, um, you. on that. And don't worry, describing love has been blundered by the masters. <laughs> 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 Nobody can really nail it down. Fire as many bullets as you want. <laughs> Hopeless. Uh, putting words to love, forget it. So you have to put the actions and see people in love, and we'll say they're in love. Mm. You can't tell us that there's love there. 
interesting though. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. For the you have players. a great author name. Oh yeah. Billy Bo. Don't that, change that name. That goes yes. right on the front cover. Yeah, really big. <laughs> Typically, like I wrote for like. So like my scholarship would put W R Bowden. I like oh, that. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You have choices. That's the wow. yeah, nice. that's, that's uh, thing that doesn't come easily to most people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go right to Billy Bones in Treasure Billy Island. Billy Bones. That's it. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you so well, much. Thanks for yeah. coming in. Thank you. Well, you'll see we all marked up the pages. It'll get. Perfect. It'll be several weeks before this is posted, but yeah. um, just for everyone, when it, well, I shouldn't say that, but it's posted, <laughs> and everyone can read the comments underneath the video, and we'll send them to you as well. Great. Okay, thank so you. thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you. It's really great meeting you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Okay, thank you everyone else uh, for joining us for this episode of Writers Infusion. We will see you next time. Keep writing. Thank you.